Hey besties, it's the Drag Detective, and today we're talking Snatch Game! Specifically, Snatch Games we were happily surprised were as good as they were. Whether it's because the queens had yet to stand out in the competition, had maybe proven before they weren't skilled in comedy challenges, or seemed to set themselves up for failure before the challenge even started, these queens, all in one way or another, blew our expectations out of the water with their performances. Now, before we get started with the ranking, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and have the notifications bell on so that you can tell whenever I post a new video. Also, if you're not already, follow my Instagram where I'm always asking you guys for your opinions in polls and giving my own as I watch new episodes. Also, follow me on Twitter, and if you are able, maybe support me on Patreon where you will get a new video a month that is for patrons only for only 5 we also have $3 and $1 tiers, so check it out if you are financially able. Now, let's get started with this ranking. Number 10, we have Alona Verley. All the way from Canada's Drag Race, there were a lot of things we could come to expect as the season went on. Terrible judging, Brooke saying something rude to the queens, Rita Bega getting special treatment, and Alona Verley causing drama in the workroom. All that drama she was causing overshadowed her performances in the actual challenges. Before Snatch Game, Alona had already been in the bottom three twice and actually lip-synced in episode four. At this point in the competition, Alona seemed like the next one to go compared to the other competitors left in the competition. Alona was the only one yet to have proven herself in any of the challenges. But the shining moment in Alona's Drag Race run was when she played Rebecca Moore in Snatch Game, one of the... Uh, frock destroyers. We don't want to get demonetized here, people. Alona took the performance to the cartoonish and filthy places it needed to go, finally seeming to let loose and have some fun. While Alona only plays safe in this episode, I don't think any of us were expecting to crack up as much as we did during this performance. She interacted with the other contestants, sounded and looked the part, and managed to land a few jokes. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to continue the momentum of this performance, and lip-synced the next two episodes, sashaying away in the second. But Alona can say she managed to deliver a solidly funny performance in Drag Race's most iconic challenge, so that's not too shabby, eh? Number nine, we have Naomi Smalls in All Stars 4. Naomi had one of the worst Snatch Game performances of all time during her first go-around at the challenge back in Season 8. She even lip-synced because of it, so... It's not too harsh to say that when the challenge came around during her time on All Stars, fans were not expecting much from Naomi. Although, her choice to play zany TV personality Wendy Williams proved to be a solid one, as she obviously knew the character very well, getting the exaggerated look and voice spot on, and she even reenacted Wendy's iconic fainting moment hilariously. If the queens weren't split up the way that they were, Naomi totally could have snagged a win here, as she was easily the second best of the week after Trinity's eerily accurate Caitlyn Jenner. Naomi's reign on All Stars 4 was riddled with controversy, but her complete slayage of the first half of the competition cannot be discounted, with Snatch Game being one of her shining moments that season. Number 8, we have Aja on All Stars 3. Now, expectations for Aja on All Stars were pretty low in general. For being such a huge name with a huge ego on Season 9, they did not deliver at all. Hearing them as a member of the All Stars 3 cast baffled many fans who did not see them as being worthy of a spot. But Aja quickly proved everybody wrong, and it all started with the shablam heard around the world. After delivering a potentially top-worthy performance in the Rusical and proving to be the runway queen of the season, Aja really cemented themselves as a force to be reckoned with when they picked Crystal LeBeja for Snatch Game, somebody that Rue has taken a lot of inspiration from and has mentioned many times on Drag Race, so it was a big risk, but it had a big payoff. Their performance was only rivaled by the juggernaut that has been to La Creme, so Aja's talents were never truly appreciated on All Stars, but the fans can agree that they delivered an all-time great Snatch Game that helped to bring their Drag Race legacy into stellar territory. 
Number seven, we have Alyssa Edwards from All Stars 2. There's a pattern here of queens flopping their original snatch games and then coming back to get their redemptions. Alyssa fits that bill perfectly. Her original snatch game performance as Katy Perry back in season five was abysmal and would have landed her in the bottom if she didn't have immunity. I mean, it was so bad Rue made her tweet Katy Perry an apology, or <laughs> sorry, a Rue apology. So I think we all took a deep breath in worry when she decided to do Joan Crawford, of all people, for All Stars. We've already seen Joan be butchered before by Mariah Paris Balenciaga back in season three, so expectations were low to say the least. But Alyssa managed to make Rue crack up, maybe not because her impression was all that good, but just because of how funny Alyssa is as Alyssa. Alyssa really managed to hone in her natural charisma and humor on All Stars way more than she did on season five. And her performance in Snatch Game is the perfect evidence of this. By focusing less on the impression and more on the humor, she struck gold. And this honing of her comedic skills leads her to winning the stand-up challenge later in the season. All Stars 2 was Alyssa at her very best. And I think we'll all have Alyssa screaming, no wire hangers ever in our heads for a very long time. At number six, we're continuing the All-Stars 2 Snatch Game Redemptions with Fifi O'Hara. Everybody's favorite villain came back to All-Stars to prove she wasn't the mean girl that she portrayed on season four. And while she might not have proven that, she did prove she's low-key a comedy queen. Fifi's Lady Gaga on season four is one of my least favorite Snatch Games of all time. If you want to see my ranking on that, please check out my Patreon where I have a whole video about it. Anyway, Fifi did something super smart her second go around at this challenge. Picking the Long Island medium Teresa Caputo, picking this type of character allowed her to set up different bits that she could always go to instead of having to rely on improvised jokes. For someone maybe not as naturally funny as an Alaska or a Katya, this is the perfect cheat code, basically, to be successful at this challenge. Whether she's having a producer hand her a card with the correct answers on it, or crossing out her wrong answers, Fifi's Snatch Game told a story, and despite doing mostly the same bit the whole way through, the way that she portrayed them differently each time, as a medium who was phony, stayed funny the whole way through. Fifi is one of my favorite queens from the entire series, and although they've stepped down as Fifi, now going by their given name of Jeremy, we can still look at the highlights such as her Snatch Game to remember what an icon she was on Drag Race and as Fifi O'Hara. Number five, we have Nina Bonina Brown from season nine. Now, there's two reasons why this performance was unexpectedly good in my eyes. One reason is because she played Jasmine Masters, who is a former Rue girl. Now, we've seen in past seasons that playing a Rue girl isn't necessarily a great move, as none of them to this point had been standouts. But also because this is post-Black China Gate, and Nina's inner saboteur, please don't kill me for saying that, was starting to rear its ugly head. Nina was starting to shut down, and the writing was on the wall that she was going to be her own worst enemy in this competition. But then Snatch Game comes, and she knocks it out of the park. She's giving hilarious jokes off the cuff, sticks with a funny voice throughout, and manages to stand out in a pretty subpar Snatch Game. Unfortunately, this is Nina's last real standout moment in the competition, as she spirals for the remainder of the competition, lip-syncing three times. But Snatch Game was one of Nina's standout moments, and considering everything against her in this challenge, I was genuinely shocked, but very happy to see her do as well as she did. Number four, we have Pearl. I'm very excited to talk about this performance because it is one of my all-time favorites. Now, Pearl had proven that she could be funny in the Despy Awards Challenge, which she won, but Snatch Game is a whole different demon, and considering how subpar Pearl had done for the most part up to this point in the season, I was not expecting a great performance from her. But wow, did she prove me wrong? An absolutely insane look, a deep grovelly voice that only someone chain smoking for decades could have, and some of the funniest improvised jokes of the night, Pearl was robbed of a top placement in this challenge. And I really think her incident with RuPaul really threw her off in the early weeks of the competition. We all know what I'm talking about. Because Pearl proved here and in the Despy challenge that she was a legit threat in this competition. Big Ange lives on in this performance from Pearl, and in my mind, is one of the best Snatch Game performances of all time. 
Number three, we have Jocelyn Fox, who was a highlight of season six's Snatch Game. Considering season six has one of the strongest casts in the series history, and this Snatch Game is also one of the best ever, this is a huge accomplishment, especially coming from a queen who's not known to be a comedic force like the Darians, Delas, and Biancas of the season. Jocelyn had shown glimmers of comedic ability in the acting challenge, but for the most part was a non-entity during the early stages of season six. So when she came to Snatch Game with references, a spot-on impression, and lots of jokes, I think everyone was surprised how much fun they were having with her performance. Jocelyn continues her hot streak with her verse in Oh No, She Better Don't the following week, but then fizzles out for the rest of her time in the competition. So her Snatch Game is a great example of the talent that Jocelyn has, and it's sad we didn't get to see her to her full potential on season six. But hey, there's always all-stars, right? Number two, we have Aquaria on season 10. The early days of Aquaria's storyline were more about her confrontational attitude, fights with other contestants, and her bratty nature, rather than any of her actual talents. She managed to snag a win in the ball, but like as the runway queen of the season, no one was that surprised. It wasn't until Snatch Game that the audience started to fall in love with her as a queen, and also see her as an actual threat. Her choice to play Melania Trump, rife with jabs at her idiot of a husband, political references, and sight gags, was hilarious. I don't think anyone expected Aquaria to be the winner of Snatch Game, especially with queens like Eureka, Monet, Cracker, and Monique competing against her, who had all proven their comedic abilities in the competition already. The skinny white fashion queen winning Snatch Game might be expected now with both Gigi and Gottmik winning their respective seasons, but this Aquaria win was a gag and set Aquaria up as a major threat moving forward in the competition. So now we are at our number one most unexpectedly good Snatch Game, and it is going to come from the first ever winner of the challenge, everyone's favorite beauty, Tatiana. Not only did Tatiana win the challenge, but she helped establish how to do well at it and how it should be played in any future seasons. Her portrayal of Britney Spears was eerily accurate, and although some of the jokes poking fun at her being a mother and her being dumb may not have aged the best in the Free Britney movement that we live in now, you cannot deny her impression was spot on for how the media portrayed Britney at the time. Prior to this challenge, Tatiana had yet to stand out in the competition, being safe every week and basically coasting up to this point, so for her to absolutely destroy the Snatch Game, beating out like a comedic queen as huge as Pandora Box, was a huge gag. While her second go-around at it was not nearly as successful, we can all remember Tatiana's Britney as being a cornerstone of the Snatch Game, an all-time great, and one that established the challenge as a staple in Drag Race. And coming from someone who was so under the radar until this point as Tatiana is huge. And that is why I think her Snatch Game is the most unexpectedly great. Well, there is my list. Let me know what you guys think. What were the Snatch Games that shocked you at how good they were? Whether it's because of the queen, whether it's because of the character, I want to know. Comment below your thoughts. And here are my socials and my Patreon, as well as my beautiful patrons, who I thank very much for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm going to be making a lot of UK2 content, so if you have not already, go vote in my poll on my community tab. Well, it has been a long day solving the mystery of where I can watch Batman and Robin. So I'm gonna go, but you guys have a great day.